what makes me to be a man of God is the rod that God has put in my hand. And the man of God is standing in front. He's fighting with many things. Fighting with your job loss. Fighting with your, with your poverty. Fighting with generational cases. From all the people, you have to play spiritual kung fu and jiu-jitsu in the spirit. Be very careful how you handle a woman in labor. The, the man of God that is standing in front of you is a woman in labor. I have got your cars inside my belly. I have got your fish and I have got your houses. Your millions are inside this belly that you are seeing here. The activity of the hand of the men of God on the mountain, it is the one triggering the prosperity or poverty behavior in the valley. The rod of the men of God determines the activity in the valley. What happens in the church is determined by how much the man of God is lifting his authority. When a man of God's feet steps into house, breakthroughs they open, things they open, cars come, houses come, but you have to keep a distance. Your breakthroughs are in the rock. But the man of God is supposed to speak to the rock. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 verse 16 to the woman he said now I want you to understand that the woman the Bible is talking about is not only Eve it's not only the women that we are seeing today. A woman is a typology of the church. It typifies the church. Whenever you see the word woman, it connotes the church of Christ. So this verse is a double reference principle. It's not only referring to the woman per se in flesh, but it's also referring to the church of God. To the woman, he said... I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain, you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Can we stand up with our Bibles? We want to read this scripture aloud to our minds. One, two, three. Let's read. Hallelujah. Can we read it again more louder than this? May the Lord, my God, bless the reading of his word today. We may take our seats. Hallelujah. I am going to be concentrating in Wazi because this week, as I was praying, God was giving me certain revelations and he was speaking to me in a very powerful way. What makes a man of God to stand and to preach? It's because God has spoken to the man and given him revelation. I am going to touch, especially I want to underline the sentence in this verse of Genesis 3.16, which is written, In pain you shall bring forth children. 
gynecology that you see today. We have got doctors that are called gynecologists who are going to universities to study about how to receive a baby into the world from the womb of a woman. Gynecology has its beginnings not from any university nor from a college, but it originates from Genesis 3.16. In pain, woman shall bring forth children. That's when we begin to have the study of midwifery, where people are taught on how to receive babies into the world. But I want you to go deeper because God was also here speaking about what we call spiritual gynecology. Can you tell somebody, say there is what is called the spiritual gynecology. Because a gynecologist is a top midwife. We have studied on how to receive children into the world. And they can use any method to make sure that they just get that baby alive into their hands. Is the woman will be in labor. And they go for years to be trained about this thing. How birth process goes around and about. How that process was created and how it functions. And the Bible is saying in pain you shall bring forth children. I want you to understand that in pain it's talking of every area of your life including even finances it's including the church it's including uh, even character so god is explaining birthing that birthing comes through pain and sorrow and groaning so he's not only merely talking about children or babies here but he's also talking about the birthing of vision the birthing of purposes in cities and in churches it's deeper than just a woman who is in a delivery room. It's, it's something very spiritual that God is talking about here. So I want you to understand some of the things that I'm going to be explaining here. That whenever a woman is in labor, there is a lot of sorrow. There is a lot of pain. Why? Because there is something that is about to come into the world. And uh, there are things that human beings have to know about a woman in labor, about a church in labor. A man of God is also like a woman in labor. And uh, he is pregnant of a vision and a purpose. And there is something that is inside a man of God. And that thing, the church, it must learn the art of being midwives. They must learn the art of receiving their baby. Because otherwise the baby can die in the stomach of the woman. If the church does not understand how to be spiritual gynecologists, they will lose vision. They can lose purpose. So it's very important to understand what God says about sorrow in giving birth. Hallelujah. Now I want you to understand something here. That there is one thing that the church must understand. Is that when a woman is in labor... Once the woman is frustrated and she gets BP, it results in complications of the, Mary, of the, of the pregnancy. So during birth, it's very important to make sure that you are next to the woman 
who is about to bring the baby. Now look at me, men that are here. A wise man knows that when his wife is pregnant and is in a labor ward, there is a baby that is about to come into that family. And now hear me, the baby will not come through any other way into this world except through that woman. Even Jesus had to come through a woman. Every vision, every purpose is born through pain, through the birth process, and through a woman, through the church. This pulpit where I am standing is a birth position. As you are seeing, as I'm standing on this pulpit, it's a labor word. Preaching, it's not a joke. Delivering people, it's not a joke. Prophesying, it's not a joke. Because when I'm standing in front here, I am fighting with all of your demons. All of you in your thousands, you come with different demons from your houses. And when the man of God is standing on the pulpit, I want the church to know that's why it's important to support the man of God when he's preaching. Why? Because he's carrying your baby. Oh my God, can I? He, he is carrying your miracle. He is carrying your prosperity. Now look at me. I have got your cars inside my belly. I have got your vision. I have got your houses. Your millions are inside this belly that you are seeing here. Oh, can I preach today? Oh, I, I feel like preaching now. Hallelujah, the devil is in trouble. So, now, the, the man of God that is standing in front of you is a woman in labor. And the church is the midwife. This house, these walls that you are seeing all over the world where churches are being done, it's labor world. And now when a woman is giving birth, what matters is not people outside the labor world. What determines the effectiveness of that birth process, the, uh, the receiving of that child, is not people outside the labor world, but it's people inside the labor world. So if they are not taught on how to receive their million, on how to receive their baby, they can be what is called a stillbirth. When a woman is pregnant, the husband invests into that woman. The reason why we are coming and giving our offerings is so that there may be a harvest of a baby. If there is no harvest of a baby, then there is no reason for labor. But when a woman is in labor, the person that is monitoring that woman is the one that is more crucial than the woman carrying the baby. Many women lost their babies during childbirth because they were put in certain labor wards where there were midwives that were not trained enough to handle a woman pregnant. So they begin to mock that woman and increase the BP level. During that moment when a woman is in labor, they can lose wire at any time. <laughs> Why? Because labor pains are out of this world. So I want the church to understand that a man of God also is in labor. Now, some women are, are giving birth to triplets. But now a man of God does not give birth to triplets but two million plates. Yeah. 
Why? Because I have your baby, I have your baby, your baby, your baby, your baby, your baby, your baby. I don't have three, I have all of you, your babies are inside. All right, can I explain a little bit here? Now, when a man is, a woman is in labor, a midwife that is taught very well must make sure they do things to make that woman not to be too much preoccupied with the pain. They must not add to the pain. They must not add to the sorrow. They must actually lighten the pain. They must lighten the sorrow. Because if you add to the pain, the baby dies. 